slideshow you're about to see is called The Little Toys That Could. It is an original story by John Murphy based on ideas from the book The Little Engine That Could. Claude Steiner's book, Scripts, People Live, and Ken Ernst's book, Prescription. The slideshow was made and presented by grade 6 from 104 during the school year 1977 to 1978. Our photographers were Rosemary Romero and Shemay Rojas. Anton Espinoza was our art advisor, whose skill helped improve the artistic quality. Here we see students receiving help and advice from him. This was in fact a difficult task, as can be seen from a cartoon taken from Anton during math. An overhead was used to put final touches on some pictures. One more class picture, this time in front of posters for another slideshow called A Fairy Tale by Claude M. Steiner. Our slideshow begins now. Many years ago, there was a village up in the mountains which had people who did not associate much with the cities and towns around them. For this reason, the village people did not think or act like city or town people. The children from the village played in the mountains and with each other but they did not know what toys were. As long as they did not know about toys, they did not know what they were missing. So they played happily with natural things, such as birds, flowers, streams, and rocks. One day, one of the children found a Christmas mail order catalog from a large toy store. He showed it to all his friends and they thought, wouldn't it be nice if we could have some toys like everyone else? The children talked over what they could do to be able to have such toys. They wanted to be like everyone else and thought that if they had toys like everyone else, they would then be like everyone else. They knew their parents would not give them money for toys because their parents didn't think children should be given things to make them happy. The children thought and thought, what could they do? One girl had once lived in the city and she knew that there were people who wanted to do things to help children who needed help. If there were only a way to find one of those people, maybe they would solve the children's problem. The girl said that maybe they could write a letter to the toy store and explain their problem and why it was important for them to be like children from the city. A few days later, the owner of the toy store, who was a kind old lady, was asked by her secretary if she wanted to read a most unusual letter, which had come in the mail from some children living in a village far away in the mountains. She said, yes. The letter was so good, she thought, why not give these children a chance to be like everyone else? She sent one of her helpers to the village school to tell the children his store was always looking for good ways to spend the profits they would not have to give it to government in taxes. For this reason, the owner decided to let every child in the village choose three gifts from the catalog and these would be given to the children by Christmas morning. Our, our story jumps to the shipping room of the toy store. We are going to tell you a secret now that very few boys and girls know. That toys have feelings. They can talk. They can think. No one knows this because toys have been taught that their only reason for being toys is to give children fun and pleasure that they have no right to think or control their own life. Because the toys believed this, they thought the most important thing for them was to be given to the boys and girls in the mountain village so the children could enjoy and have fun with them. It is now Christmas evening and all the toys are excited because they are being loaded onto a truck to be delivered to the boys and girls. By doing a good job of making the children happy, the toys believe they will go to heaven when they die. The idea of heaven is to live like the boys and girls who play with them. Such a life would be heaven to them because it would allow them to make choices about what they wanted from life and then work to make those choices come true. The toys have all been loaded on the truck. The driver says to his partner, Hey, Mac, why did we get stuck delivering these toys? 
to a bunch of kids who don't even know what toys are. It looks like a snowstorm is coming, and I don't like the idea of getting cold. They had no choice, because they knew they would lose their job if they didn't do what their boss told them. For five hours, they drove through the storm, carefully watched the map. They were now three miles from the village as they turned off the highway onto a dirt road covered with snow and ice. They stopped the truck to talk with each other. They were both scared and wanted to go home. They knew they could never get up the hill without tire chains, and neither wanted to put them on. A car stopped to see if they needed help. The driver told them the next three miles were very dangerous, and if the truck drivers wanted to leave the truck, he would take them back to town. That it wasn't important if the children got their presents on Christmas or not, this the truck was left on the side of the road and the three men returned to the city. The toys that heard all that was happening and felt terrible they would not be able to do what they were made to do. They talked the problem over and decided there were only two choices. The first was to stand the truck and freeze to death. The second was to work together as a team and do what the selfish drivers would not do. Between all of them, they had everything people have in real life. Barbie and Ken were there, G.I. Joe and the Bionic Woman, Stretch Armstrong and Charlie's Angels, trains, tractors, bulldozers, tanks, trucks, airplanes, boats, horses, snowmobiles, you name it, and it was there. A mountain climber got into the truck and found the map and toy order of where they were going. Because the toys were small, they decided not to go on the road for fear of being run over by a car or a snowplow. Everything worked together for the good of all. And before the sun came up on Christmas morning, all toys were assembled at the town hall. They had arrived by land, by river, by air, all working together, one for all and all for one. They had chosen the Billy Goat to be their leader because he was the smartest and most shepherd. And he had shown that he could be trusted and depended upon to help everyone work together. Everyone called the Billy Goat Billy. Because of the success of getting to the town hall, all toys were feeling a sense of pride and self-worth, a feeling they had never had before. Billy reminded them that their purpose in life was to serve others, and for that reason, they must all be at the correct child's house before the sun came up. The toy order was found with the map in the truck. And this allowed Billy to tell each toy what real world child it belonged with. Each toy had a hard time leaving all the other toys because it knew it would never see its friends again. But duty as a toy came before feelings as a toy. For this reason, all the toys were in the house they belonged and before the sun came up. Christmas morning, the children of the village were excited to have all the bright new toys. Little did they know how hard those toys had worked so they could be with the children. The first day, everything went good. The toys and the children were happy because they were sharing with each other in a real and honest way. Within a few days, something strange happened. Before the toys had arrived and the children had almost nothing, they shared what they had with all other children. And by sharing, they felt good all over. We will call this feeling... A warm, fuzzy feeling. Once they had many things to make them happy, they became stingy and did not want to share anything. They no longer felt that warm, fuzzy feeling. Instead, they felt bad all over. We will call this a cold, prickly feeling. The children started to blame their cold, prickly feelings on the toys because the feeling started with the toys. To get rid of this bad feeling, the children quit being nice to their toys. Before long, the toys were broken and ready to be thrown into the trash. Fortunately for the toys, Billy was the first to realize that greed and selfishness was what was destroying the village children, probably because his owner was the most greedy and selfish. As a result, Billy had one of his horns torn off and was thrown in the trash before any other toys. He wondered if what happened to him could happen to the other toys. And so every day before the trash truck made its pickups, Billy would find the toys which had been thrown out and tell them that life did not have to end there, that the toys were organizing once again, 
But this time, they would stay together and create a life which was based on the joy which comes when you work together for the good of all. This was all the encouragement the broken toys needed to say. Yes, I want to start over and try again. Within a few days, enough toys joined together so they could fix each other. Arms were sewed back on, wheels were replaced, wings were repaired, and hair which had been pulled out was replaced. Within a month, all toys were together again. Yes, they had dents and cuts, breaks and tears, but they were alive and well. The only thing missing was one of Billy's horns, because there had been no one to keep it from getting lost. The, to the, the toys were now assembled for a group meeting. A very important decision had to be made. Would the toys continue living for what they thought they were made for? Or would they decide to start a new life? If the toys chose a first, they would have to once again become toys for girls and boys to tear up. If they chose a second, they would have to step into the scary unknown. Billy reminded them of the saying that it is better to have tried and failed than never to have tried at all. He told how if they hadn't tried, they would have frozen in the truck, or they would have never had the opportunity to know what greedy selfishness does to others, or they would have ended in the trash truck, or they would not have helped and been helped by others to take into one piece. Billy told how his hope was that they would all want to leave the mountain village and go further into the mountains, somewhere where they would be free to create a life which did not require them to live by rules. But ignored the needs of the many, so the few <laughs> could live in luxury. The toys voted, and the vote was 100% to begin a new life, one which gives them freedom to choose how they wanted to live. Late that night, the toys left the village to start a new life of their own. As they left the village behind, an amazing thing happened. All their dents, cuts, breaks, and tears went away. They began to have feelings. Something they thought could only happen in heaven. You will have to decide for yourself what happened after this. It is the writer's feeling that somewhere far hidden in the mountains, there exists a world of toys which are not toys, because their world revolves around caring, sharing, and helping each other. In that world, there is no greed, selfishness, or destructiveness, because those toys have learned how these things do not and cannot bring happiness. If you found that hidden place in the mountains, you might even find Billy. He might even have a new horn, which could have grown, because of the healing power of all the warm fuzzies exchanged in that world.
Ramon's Art Slideshow. We hope you enjoyed it. Sincerely, Grade 6, Room 104, Class of 1977 to 1978.